Hi, my name is Rebecca and welcome to Yarn and Pajamas. Today is another episode of Hooked on Murder. And here in the month of February, I've done one Hooked on Murder podcast per week. And it's all been about um, love gone wrong since we are in February, which is known as the month of love because of Valentine's Day. So I thought, why not just do a little series about what happens when love goes sour or turns sour? So grab yourself a project to work on. I am working on another um, triple thick pot holder by Sarah Satch. And I'm using, I love this cotton in like a gray color. Uh, it had a yarn barf, so I can't really see the color right now. Grab yourself something to drink. I forgot to bring something, but I have a little bit of water just in case I get thirsty. And I'm going to tell you guys the story of, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a pretty out there one, but it is the disappearance of Carrie Farver. So we are going to travel back to 2012 and we are going to go to, let's say, it's like right on the border between two states. So like part of it happened in Iowa and then part of it happened in Nebraska. So right there on that line. So <clears throat> Carrie Farber worked with computers and she worked in Nebraska, but lived in Iowa. Carrie had a 16 year old son back in 2012, and she was just really loving life. Well, one day while she's on lunch at work, she goes to have her tires um, worked on at the local tire company, tire shop. And there she meets Dave Krupa. Krupa. I got the names wrote down over here because I'm bad with those last names. But she meets Dave. And Dave finds her very attractive. And he wants to ask Carrie out. But he feels that it would be like too forward of him. Because she is a customer and he doesn't want to like make her feel uncomfortable. So he doesn't. And Carrie also notices Dave, but she doesn't act on her impulses either. So, like a couple weeks later, Dave is on a dating website. And he comes across Carrie's profile. So, he sends her a message. And it's like, hey, do you remember me from the tire shop? And she's like, yeah, I do. So, they set up a date. So like so exciting so they go out on their date and they have a wonderful time and then they're going back to Dave's apartment and as they're going into Dave's apartment as soon as they get through the door there's a knock on the door and it is Dave's ex-girlfriend Liz who's dropped by to get some of her stuff so because the situation is a little bit um, uncomfortable, um, Carrie tells Dave, hey, you take care of this situation and we'll meet again and we'll go out and stuff. So she leaves and she passes Liz in the hallway and she goes on, goes home and everything. So later, Dave and Carrie go out again, and they have a wonderful time. And this time, they go back to Carrie's apartment, where Carrie proceeds to tell Dave that she's not looking for anything serious, that she has a life, she has a son, she's just looking for some companionship and someone to have fun with, that she's not looking to get married, she doesn't want to move in with anybody, that she just wants someone there for basically, you know, when she just wants, doesn't want to feel alone. So Dave is like, perfect. That's exactly what I want too. And he says that he tries not to maintain 
any kind of long-term relationships with women because that's not what he's looking for. He previously had a 10-year relationship with the mother of his children. Her name is Amy, but they never got married and he never moved in with Amy. So they um, co-parent their children, but he just wouldn't settle down with her. And the same thing with all of his subsequent girlfriends. Like, he never wanted anything that was serious. So, for about two weeks, Dave and Carrie are seeing each other. They're dating, and everything is going great. Well, Carrie has a big presentation to do at work, and she decides to stay with Dave for, like, about a week or, like, a weekend because Dave lives closer to his her work there in Nebraska because she lives in Iowa. And so it would be easier for her because of this big project that she was working on. And Dave is like, perfect. This sounds like it could be a lot of fun. So Carrie comes over and she spends the first night and Dave gets up the next morning to go to work. Carrie is getting ready to go to work and he's like, well, I will see you this evening when I get home. So, about three or four hours later in the day, Dave gets a text message from Carrie. And Carrie states, can I move in with you? And Dave's like, oh, what? No, we've discussed this and um, we both settled on that we weren't looking for anything serious like this, that we were just going to have fun. So then Carrie unleashes like this barrage of like profanities and swear words and threats at Dave like for the rest of the day. She just continuously texts him all of this because she's so irate and so upset over the fact that Dave won't let her move in with him. So she tells him that it's over, that she never wants to see him again, and that she's going to take a job in Kansas because <clears throat> she never wants to have anything else to do with him. So, Carrie also texts her mother, and her mother's name is Nancy, and her son, Max, and lets them know that, hey, I'm taking this job in Kansas because Dave has broke up with me, and I just need some time to go and heal from this. And Max does tell his mom or his grandma that his mom has been um, scouted by this company in Kansas and that she had um, was going to go and take an interview at this company, but that he hadn't heard that that she wanted to do this like on such, you know, spur of the moment. And due to the fact that she had some mental health issues in the past. Um, she suffered from um, bipolarism and um, she was currently on her medication, but um, her mom thought that maybe she was having an episode um, because of, you know, past instances. So the mom was like really worried. And after about a week, she goes to the police in Iowa and reports her daughter missing because she just abruptly left, left her kid. Her kid is still there in Iowa with the grandmother. And she um, sends her mom a message and says, hey, I've sold all of my furniture and I was paid $5,000. I need you to go and let the person into the apartment so that they can get the furniture. Well, the mom is like, um, no. <laughs> If you want to sell your furniture, you need to come and let them in the apartment yourself. You need to come home. They never hear from Carrie. They never see her. She never comes home. And they just don't know what to do. And well, in the meantime, over in um, Nebraska, Dave is receiving text message after text message after text message from Carrie. And she is just absolutely, like, flipped her lid. She is 
um, like become obsessed. She's stalking him. Like she will send him a text message that says, I just seen you take out the trash and he had just come in from taking out the trash or I see that you're sitting at your computer while he's sitting at his computer and he notices that things start being moved around in his apartment and things are starting to go missing. So he starts filing police reports on Carrie because Carrie is doing all of this stuff to him. And not only is she harassing Dave, but she also starts harassing Dave's ex-girlfriend, Liz. So she started by sending Liz um, Facebook messages and text messages, um, calling her bad names, telling her to stay away from Dave, that Dave was hers, that they were going to get married. Um, and then it escalated as, you know, like things with stalkers usually do to, um, she broke into Liz's garage and wrote a bad word, I won't say it, <laughs> on the wall and, um, told her that she was going to slash her tires and that she'd like to slit her throat, just like all of this bad, bad stuff. So she started filing police um, reports on Carrie as well. So she also gets back into contact with Dave and lets Dave know that, hey, your crazy girlfriend <laughs> is sending me all of this stuff. And so her and Dave are speaking regu regularly about the stuff that Carrie is sending to them. And they just can't believe that Carrie's doing all of this, but it does kind of rekindle like their romance. So they started back dating, which um, just infuriated Carrie. So her texts became more aggressive and more threatening to the point where Liz decides to move out of her home and to get, to get another house. And she does. And in the process of moving, um, she goes home to her old house to get a few things and notices that her house is on fire. So she calls the police department and the fire department and they come and they, you know, put it out and it wasn't too severe, but her pets were still in the house. She had um, a snake, a cat and two dogs and they all perished in the fire. And then she started receiving text messages from Carrie claiming to have set the fire and that she wished that Liz was in there and that Liz had died in the fire as well. And just all of this horrible, horrible stuff. So in the meantime, over in Iowa, Carrie's dad gets real sick. He's diagnosed with cancer and um, he doesn't live very long past his diagnosis and he passes away. And Carrie does not come home for his funeral. She, after the funeral, reaches out via Facebook to her mom and says that she was sorry that she missed the funeral but she, that she just couldn't come home. So at this time, Carrie's mom and her son start to think that that's not Carrie that they're speaking to, that they feel that Carrie would not have left her son, would not have not come home when they found out her dad was ill, and would definitely not have missed his funeral. So they start going to the police heavy duty about the fact that here Carrie is not been seen by anybody in, you know, like two years. And the police in Nebraska are looking for Carrie because of all of the stalking and harassment that she's been doing to Dave and Liz. So, the police in both states are working two totally different cases, but they're looking for the same person. So the police in Iowa start to become suspicious when they hear 
about all of the stuff going on in Nebraska. So they start contacting the police in Nebraska and conversing with them. And while they're doing it, um, Liz comes into the police station to file a report. But it's not on Carrie that she's there to file the harassment report on. She's there to file it on Dave's girlfriend, his previous girlfriend, the mother of his children, Amy, whom he was with for 10 years prior, you know, to all of this. He was with Amy for 10 years. They fought, they had two children and then, you know, their lives went separate. So him and Amy have rekindled their romance and he kicked Liz to the curb. Well, Liz comes to the police claiming that Amy is threatening her to stay away from Dave and that she's been getting these harassing emails from Amy and that she's starting to suspect that all this time, all these three years have now gone by, that it's not been Carrie that's been harassing her. She feels like it's been Amy that's harassing her. So the police find that very suspicious and then they start looking at Liz. Like, hey, you know, nobody has seen Carrie. Nobody. Her, her family hasn't seen Carrie. None of the people that are involved in the stalking and harassment, they've never seen her. They've just heard from her by Facebook or text message. So now the police in Nebraska start working with the police in Iowa together because they all feel that something bad has happened to Carrie and that Liz is possibly responsible for it. So they um, start talking, looking more at Liz and start looking at her um, like a little bit closer, like looking into her financials, looking, you know, to see like prior relationships, that kind of stuff. And then one night, 911 gets a phone call and it is from Liz. Her last name is Goyer, from Liz Goyer. She says that she was in a park and that someone shot her. So police and paramedics go, they arrive, and sure enough, Liz has been shot. She got shot in the leg, and she says that Amy was the one who done it, and that it was probably with a missing gun that went missing from Dave's apartment. They had thought Carrie had stolen it, but apparently it was Liz who stole it. So she's given the police all of this information, and the police go question Amy, Amy is like, I have no idea. I don't even know who Liz is. I, I know who she is, but I couldn't tell you what she even looked like. Um, she gave, she had an alibi for the shooting. Um, she says that she's never contacted her. She's never um, reached out to her through email or on Facebook or um, through text messages. Like that she's had zero contact with this lady. But Liz has all this proof, all these emails and text messages and all of this stuff, Facebook messages from Amy that she can show to the police. So they get um, Liz to come into the police department to question her some more about the shooting. And they tell her that they found remains and that they suspect that those remains are Carrie. Now, at this point, the police haven't found Carrie's body. They just suspect that she's dead. They're just trying to rattle Liz. And Liz is adamant that Amy must have killed her. So, she tells the police that she'll work with them. And she'll get Amy to admit that she killed Liz and help them build their case. So, apparently, Liz contacts, I know I've said apparently a lot. I don't know why I'm saying that word so much. 
But Liz contacts Dave and is like, hey, your girlfriend is a stalker, murderer. You need to get away from her. So then Dave contacts the police and is like, hey, Liz is telling me that you guys want her to work for you because Amy is a killer and has killed Carrie. I want to know what's going on. So the police just come right out and tell him, hey, if she's contacted you and you she's told you this stuff, you need to stay as far away from this woman as you possibly can. They advised him to move in with Amy and their, his children so that he could offer them some kind of protection and to stay as far away from Liz as they could. So the police now know that Liz is like going at it like she is on fire. And she gets so fired up that she calls the police. And it's like, this woman committed murder. This woman shot me in the leg. And she just gets to move in with Dave and live happily ever after. So at this point, you know that she is crazy, crazy for Dave. Crazy for Dave. Because, like, instead of being like, oh, my God, Dave's in, in terrible danger. Or those children are in danger. She was so mad that Dave moved in with her, that he was still with her, and that they had not arrested her and put her in jail so that Dave could not be with Amy. So at this point, the police pretty much know that Amy um, is not involved in this, and they are fairly positive that Leah's has killed Carrie and has been pretending to be Carrie for all these years. So they needed to find some proof and they started looking and then they found um, Liz, they found Carrie's car in the same complex that Dave lived in. It was just parked in a different area. And so they processed the car and um, got all of the stuff, evidence out of it. It was it had been wiped clean. They found one fingerprint on a, um, like a mint container, like a certs container or something that was in the cup holder. But everything else, it was clean. So... They um, run the fingerprint, and of course, guess who it matched? Liz. So this, they done, they um, processed the car probably in about year number two because they gave the car back to the mom, Nancy. And when um, the fingerprint came back to matching Liz, they um, went to find the car, and the mom had sold it, but they went and they found the new owner, and um, they took the seat covers off of the cars, and they found blood in the passenger side seat, and it was like a, a copious amount of blood, so they knew, you know, at that point that um, she had been killed. And they knew that, you know, Liz had done it because of the fingerprint. But they found pictures of uh, Carrie's car on her um, phone and tablet that was, and it was dated, and it was dated after um, train, after Carrie had went missing and while they were looking for the car. So it showed that Liz knew where the car was and that she was lying when she said that, you know, she didn't know her, didn't know what kind of vehicle she drove and all of that stuff. And, um, there was pictures of, um, actually Carrie's, um, dead body on a tablet that was hers. Um, the reason that they know that was because of some tattoos 
that Carrie had and they suspect that the picture was like a trophy for her and that that's why she kept the picture. So they were able to charge her with murdering Carrie. And you know, the only time that they, they had never even met, the only time that, that Liz ever saw Carrie was when they passed in the hallway on that first date that Carrie had been on with Dave. That was the only time that they had ever come into contact with each other. So the police speculate that on the morning that Dave left to go to work, that Carrie left also to go to work and she went out to her car and as she was like in the passenger side seat, like doing some stuff, they think that Liz um, surprised her and stabbed her to death and then drove her body somewhere. They've never recovered her body, but um, they believe that that's what happened and they believe it happened all because of Dave, because Liz was obsessed with Dave and that she was trying to get rid of anybody who was coming in between her and Dave. And she saw Carrie as a threat to that, which is very possible because Dave spoke very highly of Carrie, like when he first met her, that he felt like there was a, a nice connection and that he felt like they could have been longtime companions because they have very similar interests and they, um, had very similar views on like what the relationship should look like. So, um, and then she was trying to do the same thing to Amy only in kind of a reverse. She was trying to get Amy put into prison for the murder of Carrie so that she could have Dave all to herself. But, she did not win in the end and she was found guilty and sentenced to life where she should be and um she kept up that charade of carrie's life for like three going on four years she kept carrie's cell phone they think that she initially sent the messages to Dave so that Dave wouldn't wouldn't want to continue the relationship and so her not being in Dave's life anymore wouldn't raise any suspicion and then she had went through emails on Carrie's phone and found the the job reference to Kansas and so that's why she sent that to her um nancy to carrie's mother nancy and to um, carrie's son max was to establish that this is why i'm not home but then when she was getting um like such a positive response from dave about the harassment and the stalking and how it was bringing them together she like um upped it and took it way, way far. She also did the same thing with Amy. She created fake accounts, which they were able to use against her. Um, she just, she really went full throttle with her lies and her deceit and her manipulation. But she claims she's innocent and there's a lot of evidence against her. So I feel like they've got the right person when they caught her. Okay, what do you guys think? Um, how crazy was it that she kept up that charade for all those years? And how crazy is it that she killed her animals in her house by setting it on fire? It's like, how sadistic are you that you would torture your pets, four of your pets? just to prove that, hey, this girl is stalking me, my life is in danger. When you've already killed the girl, makes no sense. Oh, what are your guys' thoughts on this? I mean, I just wonder like, what went wrong in her life that made her be the person she was? And you know, she had children 
She had two children. So obviously she had a boyfriend or a husband that came before. I wonder if she was like obsessively crazy over that person too. I've never, um, I don't think ever been obsessed over a person. I might be obsessed with crochet at times, but never a person, I don't think. Not to the point to where I want to eliminate all of my competition. <laughs> So, yeah. So, tell me what your guys' thoughts are on about the disappearance of Carrie. Um, like I said, they've never found her body, which is sad. Like, she should at least give the location of that so that Max and Nancy can have some, you know, final closure. They can have their final goodbyes. So, okay, guys. That is it for this episode of Hooked on Murder. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I said apparently a lot. I don't know why. It was just the word of the day, I guess. Um, oh, and I also want to thank all of you guys who um, have sent me well wishes about my arm. Um, it is feeling a lot better. And I think it's because of all of the positive vibes that I've been getting from you guys. So I really, really appreciate that because my arm was really killing me. So feels so much better today. I've been able to crochet. I crocheted some this morning before I went to work and I got like half of a square finish here today. So yeah. So that's it for um, love the Love Gone Wrong series and I'll be back probably in a couple weeks with another murder of some sort to discuss with you guys. I'm going to start researching one and find us a good one to talk about. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.